God sits by himself, alone in the darkness. Around him, nothing. A void, no light, just him, sitting there in the darkness. Peering down in the darkness, he realized something. Underneath him was water, cold, empty, utterly lifeless. It was creepy. Where had it come from? Did he make it, then forget about it? Did he not make it? And if he didn't, then who did? He had to have made it, yet he couldn't remember doing so. But if he had created water, as of course he had, then why had he created only that much reality and no more? Why had he been sitting there in the darkness above the water basically forever? He didn't know why. He just sort of had. But now, for whatever reason, God had a thought. Let there be light, he called out. And there was. God was delighted. He could do this. He could make things happen, create whatever reality he felt like. It was an extraordinary moment for him. Now that there was light, God could look around. Not much. Kind of a big nothingness, in fact. A void, essentially, except for the water below and, well, him. He had felt himself before in the darkness, but he had never seen himself. Now he did. He had two strong legs, a muscular torso, lean arms. He felt his face, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, hair. Had he made himself this way, created himself, or had he somehow always been this? I want to think about it. Another unsettling thing. The penis that dangled between his legs. What was that doing there? It was ugly, God thought. There was no way he would have chosen that. It looked monstrous to him. He touched it. It reacted. He scowled and yanked his mighty hand away. This thing was an abomination, he decided. Fascinating in a way, perhaps, but bad stirring certain feelings that seemed somehow wicked, and those hanging, droopy testicles below it hideous. God had not discovered his backside yet. When he did, he was not happy. Without even speaking, God thought, I must be covered, and instantly a white robe draped over him, covering his body and hiding the offensive parts. There, that was better. He could move on. He thought for a long time about what to do next, and then spoke aloud again. Let there be sky, he commanded, because as far as he could tell, the water below him was just sort of floating in space, and he didn't like that. Next, God commanded land. He needed to be able to walk around, use his powerful legs, not just sit up in the sky. Land was necessary, and there it was. While God was pleased with what was happening, there was a part of him that did wonder why he'd waited so long to do this, why he had sat there in the dark for more or less eternity doing nothing. It seemed stupid now that he realized his own power. I could have done this all along, he thought. God was prone to self-criticism, sometimes of a harsh sort. It was a problem that would plague him for a long time to come. God was happy to see the dry land, but it looked so bare. There was nothing on it. It was brown and gray and dead silent. Walking around it didn't seem like it would be in the least bit enjoyable. How would he make it better? God had a big idea. I will make things that are alive, he thought. Things that will be interesting to watch, that will do things. He began to form an idea of a creature like himself, not only alive, but also conscious, able to think, able to grasp him, know him, love him. But he would start with simple things. Let there be plants, he commanded. Suddenly the land was dotted with beautiful, fully formed fruit trees. God looked at them appreciatively. These were very good. Later, in a moment of self-doubt, he would criticize himself for creating trees before he created the sun, but for now, Looking at the gorgeous leaves and noble trunks and luscious fruit, God felt proud. Trees are irresistible, he thought to himself, which gave him another idea that he filed away. They would make an excellent test. God looked down at his creation and smiled. Then his smile slowly faded. Given all his powers, given that whatever he commanded came into being, a bit of dry land and a few trees seemed rather small. Let there be more lights, God commanded, and, well, what can you say? Slowly at first, then faster and faster, until it was rather dizzying, the sky began to light up with stars, literally trillions of them. Trillions of trillions, in fact. There was, in effect, an entire universe. God had not intended to create something this big. A universe a few thousand miles in diameter was what he had been thinking, not this enormous, unwieldy thing. Maybe when he'd said, let there be more lights, he'd been too vague. Maybe he should have been more specific, let there be 1,000 more lights, or something to that effect. But it was too late now. The universe was massive, filled with stars and galaxies and planets. There was probably life sprinkled throughout it, God thought, but quickly realized that didn't matter to him at all. 
What happened in the rest of the universe was of zero interest to God. No, he was interested in one world. The earth creatures who would know him and obey him were the main things, the only things. He was already thinking of them, how they would love him, how he would test them. They would fail the test, he'd already decided. That was all right. He was excited about the idea of disciplining them for it. That damned self-critical voice would pop up in his head later. Creating the earth and apple trees first and then building the universe around them? Good thinking, God. He hated that voice. 